Okay, with me today, it's, a, it's a, an honor and a pleasure to have the Ambassador of Israel, Arthur Link, with me, and also Isaac Isaac, who you're an agricultural uh, consultant. Yes. Now, I'll, I'll come to you in a minute, Isaac, but first of all, Mr. Ambassador, uh, what brings you to a farming agricultural exhibition in the middle of <laughs> South Africa? Well, you know what? It's exactly where I need to be. Israel and agriculture go together, as does South Africa and agriculture. And anybody who pays attention to the national goals of South Africa, your national development plan, food security, job creation, um, water use, all of those things are agriculture, aren't they? And we're the best of the world at it. With all due modesty, we're good at these things. And so it's the kind of thing that brings Israel and South Africa together like nothing else. Mr. Ambassador, without becoming political, there was a time when Israel and South Africa enjoyed harmonious and very pleasant close relationships. That seems to have faltered in the last few years. Uh, have you any reason why it should have faltered? Well, I don't think that it's faltering so much. In fact, in terms of business, we did about 8 billion rand worth of bilateral trade in goods and services last year, and a significant amount was in agriculture. And th the truth is, is that's why we're here at Nampo, because we think that we have things to share together, both in terms of business and with my colleague, who's really an, an expert in sharing his experience around South Africa in different regions, of being able to share with our friends here in South Africa some of the experiences we've had. Isn't that rather a hypocritical way of saying that business carries on as usual, but we're not necessarily as good friends? No, I think we are friends, and friends don't agree on every issue. I mean, if we're talking peace in the Middle East, both Israel and South Africa believe strongly in a two-state solution, and that our politics are a little bit different than what you went through here in South Africa. In South Africa, you needed to get married, right? All the different peoples in South Africa. In, between Israel and Palestinians, we need to get divorced. And we're working on it. It's hard. <laughs> It is. It's a very difficult. Do you, you know, I really don't want to go down that road too much, but it, but it is a road that I would be remiss to take sure. the opportunity not to go down. It, it, that problem you have with the Palestinians and, and, and some of your neighbours, do you feel that you've gained any ground in resolving the issue? Well, I think that the vast majority of Israelis and the vast majority of our neighbours understand that we're living together. Separate states in our region. We have peace with two of our neighbours with Jordan and with Egypt, and we're talking to the Palestinians. And, you know, sometimes it's one step forward and two steps back. But in a lot of different areas, in areas of security, in areas of development, in agriculture, we cooperate yeah. because we understand that it's not zero-sum game. It's not one side wins and the other side loses, but we're neighbors and we have to live together. How are we doing in South Africa from your point of view? Because we have many similarities, as the ambassador has quite rightly pointed out. You know, it's a very interesting country. I mean, in one side you can find the first class equipment, uh, technologies, and even in this exhibition you can find exactly what uh, modern agriculture is doing. In the other side you can see the emerging farmers that actually they are not able to feed themselves. So they are making a very basic farming, they are not harvesting almost anything, they cannot uh, sell anything and then they are approaching the government to ask help. That's where we are coming on board and we are trying to bridge between what the government giving them and what we can offer by mean of training, by mean of uh, some support to start with until they are doing the way that we want them to do. Isn't it wrong, and I, and I put the question to both you, Mr. Ambassador, and you, Isaac, also, is it not wrong to ask government to keep on doing all of these things? Shouldn't a majority of the responsibility lie in private enterprise hands, financial houses, equipment suppliers, and so on? Well, I would argue that there's room for both. <clears throat> that I think that there's certainly, and lots of what we're doing here at Nampo is B2B. It's connecting businesses to businesses. Um, ZZ2 cooperates and has a great partnership with Israel's Chishtil, mm. and so the tomatoes that they grow are sold in Woolies, in yeah. Woolworths, as Israeli tomatoes. They're grown in South Africa. They're grown in Limpopo. But they're... they're you mean they're, to tell me I've been buying all those Israeli tomatoes and they're really grown here? But yes. they're... Yeah, of course they are. That's absolutely right. But two different... Two interesting things. One, the seedlings are Israeli seedlings uh. that, were, that are manufactured by the two companies together using technology from Chishtil. 
But here's the interesting thing. The brand here in South Africa, when you talk about friendliness between the two countries, the brand Israeli tomatoes isn't, there's no politics there. People understand they're good tomatoes. I just got back from Israel and oranges are nice here. But I believe, and again, I'm the Israeli ambassador, I'm supposed to believe things like this. But in, this, in the spring in Israel, right, we're in the autumn here in yeah. South Africa, but in the spring in Israel, oranges and orange juice, there's nothing like it on, in the whole world. Israeli Jaffa oranges yes, became Jaffa. justly famous over the years. Yeah. And there's a taste, there's a quality that there is nowhere else. And uh, some of it you can teach, a lot of it you can teach, and I think that the different technologies on water use, mm -hmm. on drip irrigation, on seedlings, mm -hmm on marketing are all things that I think we can share. And, and, but you asked about government, I think so, I th but I think that, and Isaac is right, of the things he was talking about. For the big farmers, they can do it on their own already. They're, it's, they're, a it's a business. Farmer, really, uh, but the small farmers who are coming back to agriculture or just trying to figure it out and are trying to transfer over from yeah. traditional methods to more modern methods, I think that, that government does have a place to help. It happens in Israel. Our government is very involved. Our Ministry of Agriculture and Rural Development is, in, <coughs> is involved in teaching and in training mm -hmm. small-scale farmers. The big guys, they do it on their own. You know what would be very nice for, for uh, South African-Israeli uh, relationships would be to take a few black farmers across w w with us and, and take them into farms in Israel so they can actually see because You've got to realize you're asking them to see something they can't visualize and have never seen. Well, Maybe if we took them there and they saw it, it would be a nice thing to well, do. Well, I think it's a good idea. And I'll, you know what? I'll tell you, we, we do have programs yeah. like that. Israel's yeah. international cooperation program is mm. called Mashav. Ah. M-A-S-H-A-V. Yeah. And if you go to the embassy website, yeah. you can find that it ha we have courses in Israel three or four times a year on agricultural issues. And we offer bursaries to South African farmers, ah. the right ones who have the right experience, who have the right background, and could go and come, come and see and, to, and learn from what we do. By the way, also on the business sector, there's an opportunity to see what we do. In 2015, next April, we're going to have our biannual exhibition, sort of like Nampo, but it's called Agritech. Yes. And it will show off all of the modern technologies and innovation. And where that will we you have hold in, this? In Tel Aviv. And um, if, you go, if you go to the website of the embassy, yes. um, just Google Israel Embassy Pretoria, yeah. and you can find out more information about Agritech, about the Mashav courses in Israel for small-scale farmers, and find out different ways to access Isaac and his expertise too.